I understand that there are some questions which were asked and are in writing, and Jonathan has them. I'll request to Jonathan to read them and then give it to me. So I'll try to answer those questions. I don't think the two microphones are going to work, so I'm just going to talk as loud as I can, and then Ishwar will read the question again uh, when he repeats it. When souls pick destinies at causal plane, how do they coordinate with other souls? Or are other players in our story just created experience? How do we know that we are not an experience in someone else's story? When souls pick destinies at causal plane, how do they coordinate with other souls or other players in our story just created experiences? How do we know that we are not an experience in someone else's story? Correct answer, there is no someone else. There is only one self. All other selves are created by one self. There is one soul. All souls are created from one soul and are within that one soul. It's just an experience of the many within one soul. This experience, which I can't call experience because not in time, takes place in your true home. True home gives you the real truth that there is only one total consciousness, never split, is still total, remains total. And the experience of the many souls is the experience of one soul. And each one of us right now thinking we are all separated, are participating in that one soul. We never left it. When will you discover that? Go not only above the mind, go above the individuated souls. That is the true home where you discover the whole show. What's happening here is happening there. Nothing is happening anywhere else except within that one soul. All rest is created by that one soul. There are no others to coordinate with. It looks strange right now, sitting in this physical world, we are so many people, how can we be one? We are not one in that sense, as an experience, we are many. The experiencer is one. When you have a dream at night, and you see many people there, and you ask each other, are we all dreaming, or only one is dreaming? They say, no, how can all be dreaming, we are all together here. You wake up. Only one dreamer. All the others were part of the same dream. It's identical to that. When you, supposing you think that this journey, spiritual journey, awareness is waking up, a series of wakefulnesses, because we have been gone into deep sleep, one dream, then dream took place within the dream, then dream took place within the dream. We have had six levels of dreams. The last level is right here. Or maybe there's one more, maybe two more. Dreams within dreams, we can even have now. When you wake up, all the people you saw, all the objects you saw, everything you saw was part of your one dreamer. It was part of one dream. If you wake up, it will again be one dream, but many other dreamers. You wake up again, one dream with many others, and finally, one dreamer, no others, all others were part of that dream. So that is why there is no problem of coordination at all. It's a complete creation every time we are here. This was such a big problem for me, not talking of souls, I was talking of karma. That when we say we have karma with people and we come back and meet the same people again, I was thinking what kind of computer that lord of death or lord of birth, rebirth is working on, that he can tie up thousands of people we meet now and then he can readjust that they can all come back again in our life again just to pay off karma. It's very difficult. Here they have in the lottery, they give, I think, six numbers and there are millions of choices of numbers. And sometimes one person, sometimes nobody wins a lottery because the odds are so much against just finding out six numbers out of 80. It looks very simple. But it's very difficult. Look at the odds that will be trillions and trillions of that odds of having the same number of people coming together for, um, 
for getting their karma paid off. It took me a long time to realize when we come, we think they are the same people, we create the same people. Each one carries a complete universe, including the karma that plays out. It's within the same totality of consciousness and that is why there is no coordination needed at all. It's your own experience that you generated and when you meet people, it's part of your experience. It's cause and effect is applying to your experience and nobody else to share that experience. Are there any others? Eventually you'll find out there was no other. The self that you are feeling inside you right now, the self that is making you see this world is the same self. That's totality. Let me give you an example. Supposing you have a dream. In the dream, you are young, very small. You say, I am a little child. I, I thought I was a big person. How could become a child? In a dream, you can do that. Is that child in the dream the same self? That's the big one who's dreaming or different? You see the body's child, the self is the same. The self that is awake in dream remains the same self, no matter whether it's change of form or not. That is why there was, I gave the example of a Chinese philosopher who had a dream that he was a butterfly. Fahin dreamt that he was a butterfly. And he was flying in a garden which looked so much different, so much more real than the gardens he had seen. The flowers were alive, radiating light and color. He had never seen them before. He was flipping around with his wings as a butterfly, seeing that garden. And he said, this is reality compared to what he saw as a human being. And then he woke up to the dream. He then began to wonder, Am I really far he in a human being who had a dream that he was a butterfly or am I really a butterfly who is now dreaming that I am far he in? He told his friends, he was a philosopher, he consulted other philosophers, he said, I had such a strange dream that I was a butterfly. They said, don't be stupid, you can't be a butterfly, you are a human being. You should say you saw a butterfly. He said, I never saw a butterfly. I was flying. The same self that is Swaheen was the same butterfly and the self could not be changed. You'll be surprised no matter what condition you are, dreaming, awake, higher levels, highest level, same self. Self will never change. What will happen will be you realize the dreamlike nature of creation and you ultimately find you are that one who created all. There is nothing outside of it. So there is no question of coordination. If you know the truth, it's all happening within one totality of consciousness, one single consciousness. I don't want to use the word single because that means there may be more than one. There is no more than one. That's where we really want to. You have everything there. Some people think we have come away from there, that we have been dropped from there into this physical world and we have to go back there and the physical world won't be there. Nothing is outside of that. A perfect living master is one who is operating, even as a human being, from there. So therefore, he is in contact with all levels of consciousness 24-7. He's not remembering something that he had experienced. That is all mental. A perfect living master is in touch with all levels of consciousness, including totality at all times. Therefore, he knows this is part of the same. Everything that is happening at any level of consciousness is all happening within that one. So that is why it's only a mental question we ask here because we think we are really divided. That's what we see. That's what we experience. Experience of many has been generated. Why? Because consciousness is conscious of an experience and experience is separated from the consciousness in order to become an experience, otherwise it remains an experiencer. When the experiencer has an experience, the manyness is created right there. Purpose of the manyness, if one is love, and I mentioned that,
people say god is love the creator is love i have heard that in almost every religion that the creator is love but it is love but not the experience of love the manyness it is the experience love becomes an experience knowledge becomes an experience everything that is in the one in totality of consciousness becomes an experience by creating the many and the many are first created at that very level so in our true home we are one and many at the same time because there is no time and you can experience both that's a unique experience you can't have it here you can't have it at the astral plane you can't have it at the causal plane you can't have it at the spiritual plane you can have it at the top at the top you get the real experience where the one and the many are experienced together now somebody who's having that experience sitting amongst us supposing comes like a human being ordinary human being sits with us we can never have any idea what that person is experiencing what is it's not an experience even what is knowing what is aware of and awareness is completely total and that is why when you have that awareness you come to know the truth the truth is there is only one consciousness and within that consciousness everything has been created as experience including the manyness including the minds including the separation including physical planes and when you reach there everything is put together has it gone above the head or still here <laughs> does mechanical simran done while walking around and going about your day drawn one draw one closer to the master in love or is it that mechanical repetition a distraction to experiencing that love does mechanical simran done while walking around and going about your day draw one closer to the master in love or is that mechanical repetition a distraction to distraction to experience that love it depends on what we mean by mechanical simran simran is repetition of words it's a language that we have learned here no matter what the words are no matter what language it is they are created words for this physical plane they can be repeated here and they can also be repeated in our imagination they can be repeated by the mind in in imaginary state and in physical state thoughts can be in words these are words that can only be used in these levels words have meaning when we say this person speaks deutsch speaks german language they speak english language a different language is german guy guy can't understand what's in english englishman can't understand german one step higher in the state of imagination the state of astral communication one person communicates in german the other person understands in english automatic translation why is that because the method of communicating at that level is telepathic sometimes we have that experience here is not happening because of here physically there is no means to translate language automatically but when telepathic communication takes place somebody thinks of a thought in one language the friend gets the same telepathic thought in that language it's automatic because what is transferred is not words the meaning of words what is intended to be said and that is the normal communication the next level of awareness so that is why these words have very limited use here they drop off and other sounds and other kinds of communications come up when we leave the body and we go into astral and causal planes and of course there is no language except love beyond that repetition of the simran or words that have been given as a mantra by a master are good to develop a habit words repeated with the tongue have not much value the words repeated by the mind have value 
because when you repeat the words of the mind mind can't think of anything else when you are trying to force the mind to repeat the words it's a means of concentrating your attention on the mind on the words it's just a means of concentrating attention mind also has a habit forming tendency it forms habits if you keep on doing the same thing mechanical repetition of words is useful to the extent that the mind forms a habit and when is that habit useful when you meditate the mind is got habitual so it starts repeating the word by itself otherwise it is not a great step towards spiritual awareness it only has a limited advantage but while you are repeating the words not mechanically but remembering the master remembering these words were given by the master and most importantly when you are remembering the words in the master's own voice it really brings love and devotion in your heart so that is why there are different ways in which we can do our simran and repeat the words the best is sit quietly and do meditation or walk and be aware of the words of the master ringing in your head that is why initiates of perfect living masters have been given that initiation and the words to repeat by the master human form of the master in his own voice and that voice when you capture and recall it the best simran there is nothing like it it comes with love and devotion automatically because you are remembering the master do you know if you can remember the master without repeating words is better than mechanical repetition of words but if you can link the words with the love and devotion for the master the best way to do the simran so remember mechanical repetition has some value that at the time of meditation the mind will pick up quickly and the real value is when the repetition reminds you of the master and when the repetition is a memory recall of master's language master's voice it's the best repetition <coughs> Dearest adorable master I have, No master Okay I have a confusion on the relation of sound meditation with developing love and devotion In some satsangs you said the shabd is our true self and connecting with it connects to our self and god but then sometimes you say that no meditation of any kind connects us to god or home So I feel there is a contradiction please if you can explain Okay I'll remove the contradiction today <laughs> I just explained in the morning that the self never changes the self remains the same all other is experience Can we have an experience of the self if there was no other experience does the experiencer have an experience of the experiencer without any other experience so that he that the existence of consciousness is automatic by itself yes it is the consciousness is aware of itself at all times the self never loses the consciousness of itself you all know the self is there you are thinking you are using a mind to think using senses to work you're using a body self is constantly known to us therefore the self knows itself but is there something experiencing the self yes it is the self can be experienced in physical plane like a sound coming from the self and that's a very interesting thing sound coming from the self is it it we can call it meditation on the self normally we do meditation around the self we need to be repeating words thinking of master making pictures all around but we do not have any experience of the self itself the experience of the self is called shabd sound it, it is a connected experience 
and does not go away from one level to another. I called it earlier, the self remains the same at all levels. The sound connects at all levels also. That means the sound is here, sound is there, sound in a different form is right to the top. Now I'll explain what the different form is. The form that the sound is being used here, outside, are, we call it varad atmak shabd. That means sound that can be used for language, for speaking, writing and so on. Which we are using now. I am using it right now. To communicate with you, I have to use sound in a language. And this is called varanatmak shabd or that which can be spoken and that which can be written and communicated like this. But we don't need this as I explained in the astral plane. The thoughts can transfer the meaning without using this, these words. That what kind of sound is there? There you have a sound that emanates from the self but resembles something else. Physically we want to go to the astral plane if we can attach ourselves to the sound of the soul, we are pulling our attention back to the self and the other sound will start coming in. If you hear that sound, which is coming from the self, and not hearing this side or that side, roaring trains or um, chirping crickets and little bells ringing, which are all around it. But the sound of the self is very interesting. It resembles the sound of a big bell. It's just a coincidence. That is why we don't realize why bells were put up on the belfries in the churches, why bells are rung in all the temples, why this kind of a sound is being used. When the bell sound is there, it does not come from any side. It comes from self and we are not aware where the self is, so it looks like it's all around us, like a surround sound. This is different sound than the spoken sound I'm using and continues to be a very major part of the astral plane. So instead of varanatmak shabd, we call it dhunatmak shabd. That means it's missed mostly a tone, a sound that's in the music of it is the sound, not the words that we make out of it. And it's good enough there. It changes again. If we go from the astral plane, to the causal plane, the sound is again from the self, but changes. And it looks like it's a sound that has already been there all the time. Here, if somebody now rings a bell, before that I was not hearing, now I'm hearing. In the causal plane, it looked, we have been hearing it all the time. It's not that the sound is coming now. Sound was there all the time. I was hearing all the time at that level. I just blocked my ears and therefore I came into the physical and astral self and didn't hear it. It doesn't mean sound was not there. It's a very strange experience that you have a sound inside you at the causal plane, which is running all the time, and you know it's running all the time, but you go there, that you've been hearing it all the time there. In that self of yours, you're hearing all the time. Therefore, the dhun atmakshabd has been termed in our Indian literature as anhad shabd. Anhad means it has no beginning, no middle, no end. It's infinite. It's not merely called infinite because the universe is infinite. It's called infinite because your experience of the sound is that you have been hearing it infinitely. And that's a different form, still coming from the self. You cross over beyond the mind, beyond this creation altogether, beyond all these three worlds. What does the sound become? It can't be a sound anymore. There you discover the sound was not coming from yourself. It was the self. That happens only what they call it parabrahm. That means beyond the creation of the mind. In Parabrahm, the sound show that you are, you are the sound. Till then it is not you, yourself, you are separating yourself as an experiencer. There you found the so sound was merely a connection that continues from one level to another. Other things change, levels change, sound does not, sound continues, sound moves you from one to the other. And there, there when you discover that, it's called Sar Shabd. Sar Shabd means real sound, real sound is itself. When you go to true home, you find that the sound generated from there. Even the sound we heard in the physical plane at every level that changed like that was generated from there. So it's a connecting link just exactly like the self. So the sound is the self. But merely practicing sound here and hearing various kinds of sounds, 
that meditation doesn't connect you. The sound is being used right here in meditation to pick up a sound. Out of several sounds you can hear. And several sounds, both positive and negative, can be heard in early meditation. You pick up the right sound which comes from the self. Then, then only you are moving toward the self. Then only you are going within. Otherwise you are without. From the side sounds are coming. Some say, oh listen to the right side. Listen, don't listen to left side. Oh listen to left side. What does it mean left side, right side sounds? It means nothing because the brain is situated that it functions, logical function one side and intuitive function on the other side. Therefore we separate them and say they sound listen to the right side. There is no other reason for it. But it doesn't mean that the right side is, is our true home or something. Or right side is taking us anywhere. No, it will take you to the right side. I met people, my friends, spent 20, 30 years listening to sound on the right side. And they said, why didn't we make any progress? I said, you made good progress on the right side. <laughs> but you didn't make any progress toward yourself. You are not on the right side. You are not on the left side. You are in the center of the head. In wakeful state, you are in the center of the head. Therefore, you miss the real sound. So the real sound comes from the center and connects all the way to the top. Meditating on sound by itself means nothing, but if you meditate on the real sound, it is like, it's like a, a jumping up. It's like a, like a leap for, forward. The attention is gathered to the self faster by listening to the sound of the self than any other means. That is why this particular yoga, which I practiced and great master taught, is called Surt Shabd Yoga. Surt means attention, Shabd means sound, Yoga means union with the ultimate. So the, that is why it's really a path of using sound within ourselves. And that sound is resounding in everybody. I remember there was a, a robber gangster in a gang that used to rob places and they heard that uh, there was a dera being built. This is a long old story when the dera in India was being built and great master's time it was still being built uh, and before him it was a very few huts only and then later on his, in his time a house came up where he lived and many houses came up and people like me and my parents also bought houses there. And the dera was being built the great master decided that we'll have a large auditorium because smaller auditoriums were getting too small for their meetings and more and more people were coming. So the designers of the satsanghar, that means the place where the satsangs, where the meetings were held, the discourses were held, they designed it that there will be gold toppings. We'll make some nice minarets and make it look very nice, shining gold tops. So an appeal was made, anybody wanting to donate any gold, the surplus gold you have, we'll melt it and make it on top of that building. And so many people gave their gold. So many women gave their bangles, other people do it. We want to see our contribution in that building. And the building was coming up and gold was all collected. This came to be known to that gang. And the gang said, that's the place to rob the gold before they get put on the building. So they sent one of its guys, an explorer, to go and do a recce, what they call reconnaissance, so where the gold is at this time. So we grab it before they put on the building. It's very difficult to get from the building, but let's collect it. So that guy, it's a Muslim guy, and he came to explore. At that time when he came, the great master was giving a discourse. And people were all there, attending there. And he moved about in the houses which were lying there, and uh, he asked some ladies, ladies, why aren't you going to this meeting? Your master is giving a talk. Oh, no, no, we are taking, up the gold, taking care of the gold. Where is the gold? Oh, there is that box. He said, this is the easiest way to find gold here. He went to another house, and there were some children playing. What are you doing here, playing? No, no, we are taking care of gold. They have, they, we have saved some gold here. Where is the gold? Oh, it's a top shelf there. They all revealed in the houses where the gold was. He said, this is the easiest recce I've ever done. So, a thought came to him. What kind of a man is giving a talk that 
even he, these owners of gold are not are willing to take a risk with that gold leave with the ladies and children and go to listen to him what kind of talk can he give that they don't care for the material wealth he said i should go and see what is he talking about so as he left the place and he was walking he stood at the back at that moment by coincidence great master was saying that real sound comes from within and is the secret to the true home and even gangsters and robbers have it <laughs> he said how do they know i am here <laughs> i have to wait and ask him so he waited and at the end of the discourse he walked up to great master he said how did you know i am a robber and a gangster he said i don't know you at all who are you he says no you know it i came at the back and you told me even gangsters and robbers have that sound inside and with that sound you can go into the true home i am a muslim are you telling me that that sound is more important than my kalma is more important than this thing? he says it is the real kalma i am not talking of anything else you heard of bangay aspani the sound coming from the sky that's the sound i'm talking of all you need to hear the sound is just be accepted by a murshid kamal a perfect living master he got so much affected by this conversation few minutes conversation he said i am going to stay here now this guy's name was shadi and he stayed with the great master made most rapid progress i was very young and he great master asked him what will you do here nobody lives here free they all do some seva what kind of work can you do he said i can only rob people i never learned anything else great master said no no that's not good <laughs> I, i i don't want you to rob people here <laughs> just to live here you have to do something else he said even in the case of robbery what did the gang do travel around move oh i used to repair the dynam dynamo the armature and the electrical things in my truck you know get away truck he said okay we'll get you an armature we'll get you dynamo so the first generator which was run with diesel oil and it had a belt on it was installed and he ran it i used to come sometimes uh, go and work the belt you know it had to be started manually i still remember that with shadi i would go and say i want to move the belt myself think old old memories but he had such wonderful experiences he went back in time on the timeline i was able to see not only the prophet which he was very fond of but also went back even saw jesus christ and even saw many other masters of the past they are all there nothing disappears on the timeline it's just a matter of where you are so he had these great experiences that great master allowed him sometimes to tell these experiences in small discourses so this sound which we are talking of is something once you hear it it lifts you up almost like you feel you are being taken off your off the ground is the fastest way to pull attention because you are listening to something in yourself and that's why it's the it's one of the most important things excuse me for a minute i didn't put it off again <laughs> but you didn't hear it did you okay. this is not that sound i'm talking of <laughs> that is why that is why it's it's, uh, it's very important to know that the sound of the self resembles a bell i am giving you a little hint but it resembles a bell you see bell has a strike dong then there is a peal of the bell the so the sound inside has very little of that dong no hit on it it's very melodious very beautiful the peal is really the appealing thing when you listen to it the peal becomes longer and longer sometimes some people feel it says kind of a whistle or some kind of a some people compare it with the conch that they we blow a conch so it's a continuous sound but in the beginning it looks like it's got a vibration up and down and then it becomes longer and longer and that's the sound if you can hear fastest way to get your attention inside
लास्ट क्वेश्चन तो दिस वो दूजन ऑल रिजॉल्व थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर कमिंग सी यू नेक्स्ट मंथ